Okay, so we've um, so we've arrived at Draycott. The sun's out, and it's been out for the last two or three days. So obviously that's going to impact on the fishing. It basically rules out dries. It means that, well, I would guess the fish won't be in the top three or four foot. I'd have expected them to drop. Um, we've got quite a, a stiff breeze. It's probably eight to ten miles an hour. So. I think we need to get our flies down to sort of the five to ten foot sort of depth and just sort of work the layers until we find out exactly the depth the fish are holding at and then we can tweak our methods a bit. So my initial thought is to start off on a die three, so a line that sinks at three inches a second, um, a die three sweep actually, it just gives that that curve that can induce the takes. I think a three and a die five sweep are probably the two most versatile lines you've got in your box. They allow you to literally fish it straight back, just a couple of, uh, couple of feet down, or if you count it down, you can get 15 to 20 feet deep without any problem at all. So that's gonna be my starting point. I'm gonna keep it very simple and I'm going to fish two snakes. Now, obviously, casting two snakes is not the easiest of tasks, so we need a reasonably stiff leader material. So I'm going to opt for 10 pound masterclass. It's got great knot strength. It's thin. And also, obviously it's not as, as thin as, say, six or seven pounds. So it will turn the fl those larger flies over. Two flies. A lot of people don't use two flies when you're fishing snakes because it can be difficult, especially when they're wet. But what I'm gonna do is use the smaller mini snakes. So it is easier to cast. So the top dropper, it's going to be seven feet from the fly line and that's going to be an unweighted white snake and the reason it's unweighted is obviously to make casting easier and the reason it's white is because when it comes up and you're hanging the fly you can use it as an indicator almost if the fly suddenly shoots backwards you know that a fish has taken the point if the fly disappears obviously it's taken that fly Three-turn water knot as a dropper. Right, let's just find a nice... A white snake, a mini white snake. Obviously the length of leader depends on how competent you are at casting. I've gone, say, seven foot to my top dropper. In about nine, nine feet to the point. And I think on the point, I'm gonna go with it's quite bright. I'll have something with a bit of flash. So we're going to go for a black and gold snake. Obviously the gold's going to add a bit of sparkle, but the black is quite subtle. And obviously this is weighted. If you wanted to fish just one fly, and it, it's not that with two flies you get automatically get twice as many fish. It doesn't work like that. It might give you 10, 15% more fish tops. So I actually don't mind fishing a single fly at all. If I was going to fish one fly, I'd probably fish one fly on a, uh, a weighted snake on a, uh, on a 12 foot leader of 10 pounds. Again, just keeping it easy. Um, right, so that's the setup. We've gone for a fairly stiff rod, an eight weight with an eight weight line. Again, it's just to help casting and turn over these big flies. The lighter rods, five, six weights. It does make casting two big flies very difficult. So we're making things easy for ourselves. So we've started out uh, in deep water and we're drifting on to two marker boys, O and K. And the reason being, obviously this deeper water, the, um, there's quite a chop on, so it will mask all my faults. It makes it, uh, it sort of camouflages the line and the flies. It makes it more difficult. 
and it gives us more chance, obviously, when we're fishing lures. So there's quite a chop on, actually. Um, I may need to drop to a faster sinking line, but initially I'll start on this die three, and I'll give it, say, 10 seconds, and as it comes up, just hang it with the, uh, with the white snake and watch that. And the, uh, the heavier weighted snake on the point obviously drops back. So any following fish, as it comes up, the fly's going away from them. It may induce the take. If not, as it drops back down, as I drop the rod tip slightly, the fly goes back down and again, the fish just grabs it. We've got a line marker at 13 feet. Again, that's just to allow me to control my line and my flies. So I know when the, uh, when the line marker hits the tip ring, there is um, 13 feet of fly line out of the rod tip. So in clear, calm water, I can hang the flies further away from the boat. And when it's windy, as it is today, I can figure of eight quite quickly and just hold the flies just under the water and remain in control. And if I was to get a take, because I know exactly where my line are and my leader, I can set the hook. There's nothing worse than trying to strike when you've got too much line out or you're not in control. Right, so we'll start, um, we'll start with the slow roly-poly. It's sort of the go-to method with fishing snakes. So all I'm doing is literally just in keeping in pace at the same sort of speed as the boat. So it allows the flies of the line to bed in. Okay. And then when I think it's at the required depth, say 10 seconds down, I can just throw in a little spurt just to speed up a touch. And hopefully we'll pick up a fish or two. The good thing obviously about Draycott is there's, um, there's sunken islands. So as you drift onto the sunken island, you've got a change in depth. You've got obviously coming from deep water up the ledge into the shallow water where there's weed and there'll be, uh, there'll be fry, crixa, shrimp in the weed. And obviously as you drop off the other side of the island, again, you're going back into that deeper water. So you've got a feature and a, an area that's holding food. So it usually holds a fish or two. Obviously the other good thing is you've got marker boys and those marker boys have got great big metal chains hanging from them. And those chains again, hold weed, which attracts the fish. Oh, the line needs to get wet really. So what I do, Obviously to start with is just mix up the retrieves, mix up the depths. As I said, the die three is excellent for searching those, those depths. Just have to work out how the fish want the retrieve. As I said earlier, we're using the white snake as almost like a sighter. You will see any movement and it's much easier to see than obviously an olive or a dark snake, a black snake. So you can, uh, you can notice any resistance and instantly set the hook. All we're really doing is trying to cover as much water as possible to find the fish. It's not always obviously, you're not always going to catch on the first drift. You're not going to catch on every drift. Initially it's about finding where they're holding. Well, that was a follow. There was a follow to the white fly there. Obviously, if I was fishing two, two lures like this at the top of the wind in a calmer water, because the water's calm, you know, there's, no, there's very little ripple to break up the surface. Um, it's a lot easier for the fish to see your fly line, to see your leader you're probably better off fishing a single fly and, and I would tend to fish a single fly at the top of the wind. 
as I said earlier, it's because we're, we're in this rougher water, it gives you the opportunity to, to fish a, a two fly cast. We've set up a drogue today, uh, which is basically an underwater parachute. And if you're drifting in anything more than say five or six miles an hour, you know, winds, uh, a drogue's essential because it slows you down. Um, really easy to set up. The only sort of consideration you've got is to make sure the, the drogue ropes at each side are of an equal length and not twisted. Um, that's pretty much it. You just chuck it out, wait for it to set, and uh, it will slow you down. I tend to have my drogue ropes different colours for the simple reason that they can become tangled and with two different colours obviously it's a lot easier to, to untangle um, and for the same reason I've got quick re release carabiner clips attaching the rope to the drogue. Um, it's all about speed and convenience and quite often the, the drogue ropes that are supplied with the drogue are very thin. Um, and we all catch the drogue in the, uh, in the engine and those thin ropes can get wrapped around the prop um, and it's very difficult to untangle them, especially if they become embedded. So with these thicker ropes, you don't have that problem. It just stops the engine dead and it's very easy to sort of pull out. So we're just mixing up the retrieve from a, a fast figure of eight to stripping. Hopefully the change of speed can induce a take. little tap on the point fly then and that was 15 seconds down so I'm automatically thinking I don't really want to be waiting 15 seconds for my flies to sink I should be on a faster sinking line so that my flies get to the required depth much quicker so I think I'm gonna have a couple more casts and drop to a die 5 sweep so we've just put on a die 5 it's far easier when you're changing lines to wind obviously the fly line all the way down and then you just thread up through the two rings and you can connect there so it saves you having to re-thread the whole rod so on goes the die five set the drag that's right we just don't want the reel to overrun should we get a big fish so we've gone from a die three sweep to a die five sweep Obviously a die three sweep sinks at three inches per second. The die five sweep that little bit faster at five inches per second. Again, this has also got a line marker fixed at 13 feet, which is just a bit of thread that's whipped on. Again, it lets me control my flies. This one's got green thread, there we go. You can instant, I can instantly feel this sort of bedding in and getting deeper. It's not as affected by the wave action as the three was. It just beds in a lot quicker. So hopefully it will prove more successful. Again, a nice steady roly poly. When we get a take, we just speed up into the fish. If we get a take, no, I should say when. Because obviously the line's bedding in deeper, it's a lot easier to fish the hang because the flies are already at a depth and they've, they've set, if that makes sense. They're, you know, the weight of the flies and the line is coming up from deep, so you're always sort of in touch. Because there's quite a wind, all we're doing is aerialising a short amount of line. It makes casting easier. If you try and aerialise too much line, it's going to end up in a tangle or around your boat partner's head. Oh. There's two I've missed. Not good. 
just as it came upon the hang, the fly moved away. I didn't feel it, but I've seen the fly moving, so it's taking it on the hang. And obviously, because you're so close to the boat and the rod absorbs the take, you've got to hit it pretty hard and it's sort of all or nothing. You either set the hook or you miss it completely. That's the thing with snakes, you do get, because they're quite a big pattern, well they are a big pattern and they've got so much movement, you do get a lot of takes and a lot of follows. And it does put some people off because, say, the, the hookup ratio to takes and follows isn't as good as, say, on a buzzer or a dial back. But you're getting takes and follows that you wouldn't get on, a, on another fly. So really, as far as I see, you have no option. Um, in these, these conditions, it's going to be extremely difficult to fish nymphs. You'd have to fish a tip and short line, or else you'd have no contact over your fly line. I think what we'll do, we'll probably cut across and fish down the boy line. And the reason being, obviously, the boy line, there's anchor chains off those boys. And again, that, that does create a feature. Um, and wherever there's a feature, it usually holds fish. So we will uh, push ourselves over a couple of hundred yards. There's got to be a fish here. There's one. On the black snake. I'm actually quite confident that, you know, there's a few fish here. We're on the boy line. So again, it's a feature. We've dropped down a line. Um, so we're getting our flies literally straight down to sort of eight foot mark. We've had a couple of follows, a couple of taps, you know, takes on the hang. So, yeah, I think, uh, I think there's a few fish here. I'm not saying there's lots, but there's enough to have a go at. And I think as we drift down this line of boys, I think there's a good chance we'll probably pick another one up. There must be a fish. I would expect it. There's a fish! Oh, it's come off again. Bastard. There it Sorry, you can edit the swearing out. <laughs> that was on the when I increased the speed. There we go. Better fish. There's, there's no doubt at all that because of the movement in the snake, it does induce a lot of takes and gets, you know, elicits a response. And I think the key things to remember uh, are just to keep it simple. There, there's no need for fine leaders. I would say a minimum of eight pounds, but my preference is 10 pound masterclass um, because I think it's got that that combination of both strength and presentation. So that's my go-to leader material when I'm fishing sort of any snake pattern. Um, I tend to fish a roly-poly retrieve more often than not. And I think that's just because you can keep more movement in the pattern um, and you're always in contact with it. It's just my preference. I do tend to sort of vary the retrieve a lot from from very slow to training a little spurt and it, it if i'm being honest it's basically like legal spinning um, you're trying to induce a take yes you're representing a bait fish but you're appealing to the fish's aggressive instinct 
and there's no doubt that on its day it does produce an awful lot of fish on pretty much any water but it's not like any method it's not always the answer it may not be the best method today but it does help you locate the fish and that's a tactic that I've used many times you know use a snake to locate the fish and then if they're not taking confidently you can uh, tweak your methods i.e. do they want nymphs more do they want the washing line do they want a smaller fly like a blob do they want it slower do they want it completely static so something under the bung um, it's just a case of working through these methods and, and trying different combinations until you get it right